To begin this review, I'm going to do a little bit that very loosely ties in thematically to the game I'm going to take a look at, Smartphone Inc. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hey Tom Vassal of the Dice Tower. Which hideous hat and tie are you wearing today? No, your face is hideous. <laughs> hey Tom. No, my smartphone did not lose connection. It's made of the highest quality components and runs on a somewhat adequate network. Oh, speaking of somewhat adequate, how's the Dice Tower? Just as an aside, in real life, I have a working relationship with Tom and he knows that these jolly jabs are just in jest. You want me to review the latest game in your Dice Tower Essentials line that's Smartphone Inc? Published by Arcane Wonders and designed by Ivan Lashin? Okay. In Smartphone Inc, players are CEOs of some of the largest smartphone producing companies in a time when smartphones were just starting to conquer the world. They'll research technologies, build factories, develop an office network across the world, stuff like that, you know, all kinds of smartphone smarty stuff. Here's what that looks like in the game. The game is for one to five players and it takes place over the course of five rounds. Each round is made up of eight steps. Now I have the components over here for just one player, but like I said, up to five people can play and they come on different colors like red, green, yellow, black. There are also components for a solo mode with this creepy eyed thing. And this is a thing that folds out and it's got this separate little board here that um, you will use to kind of um, automate some things, kind of replicate a player doing things that might mess you up. Uh, this guy's name is Steve. Wonder where they got that idea. Now, if you're playing less than five players, uh, you're gonna put these things called retailers out onto the board in some of the countries. These spaces right here are called buyers. So you're gonna cover up the buyers with retailers. I'll show you why that's important in a little bit, but basically what it does is it makes the board tighter and more balanced for games with fewer players than five. You'll put more on there for a two player game and then fewer and fewer up until you get to a five player game where there are none. Each player has the components that are over here in this handy component organizer. There are three different types of pieces. There are cubes, there are these little office buildings, and then there are these little stair step things that I guess kind of represent progress. Each player also has two of these pads that of course are simulate some kind of tablet, iPad, whatever you want to call them. And I'll show you how that works here in a minute. But first I want to go over all of the different steps of each round. Players will complete step one through three simultaneously. And then after that, the player order is determined by whoever has, is selling their, uh, their goods for the fewest amount. They will lead the rest of the rounds. Um, this first one is to establish how you're gonna set your pads to uh, determine what your actions are gonna be later in the game. This will establish how much you're selling your goods for. Whoever's selling their goods for the lowest amount will be the leader for the rest of the steps of the round. When you move from step to step, you move this little black thing to help you remember where you're at. You might even forget to use it, but I think it's helpful. This step is called production, and that's whenever you will uh, make goods that come onto your available goods section into your little tray. This next step is called improved production. It's gonna help you, well, improve your production and give you more opportunities to produce more and improve all, all aspects of your production. This step you will research. Uh, that's these things down here on the board. There are technologies that you're gonna research to make your, your smartphone company better and the, the things you have to offer uh, for your network, you're gonna make those better. This next step is called logistics, and you're gonna go all the way around the world and put out these little stair step things here to try to increase your office network around the world. So you can see there are like little numbers here, and that's how many little stair step things you wanna get there before you can build an office, like that. These are the points you'll get for office numbers and points are dollars basically, how much money you're making. Then you're going to sell goods. So all the goods that you've made, you have the opportunity to sell them. Um, these again, as I mentioned, are the buyers and each buyer has something they're looking for in the products that you're selling. If you see a red number, that's the number that they'll pay. That's the maximum amount they'll pay for a good. So in this case over here, let's just say I've got five. I'm selling my goods for $5. This says they'll pay a maximum of six. So that's good, I can put one of my goods there. Well, these merchants or these buyers want these technologies in their phones. So if I've researched the game technology, I can put that there. Um, if I research 4G, I can put that there. And then I'll get 
five points per good that I've sold. And that's actually the last step is calculating how much money you've made by selling your goods and moving your cube up on the track for however many points you've made. Now let me get to the, the uniqueness of, of the game. Now this, you know, setting prices, improving the things you have to offer, improving your production, those are all things that you might experience in other economic style games. But here's something that I think is really unique. So these are the paths that I mentioned at the beginning. And you're going to, at the beginning of the game, in this phase, whenever you start, or not the beginning, well, the beginning of the game and the beginning of each round, you're going to start by planning uh, what you're going to do for the, the entire round. And you do that by overlaying these pads in whichever way that you want to. And they're double-sided. The only thing that, the only restriction is you have to cover up at least one square. So there are th six squares. You have to cover up at least one um, to be able to, you know, be legitimate. Everything that shows is what you're going to be able to do or the amount that you're going to be able to do for each step of the round. So in this case, I'll be able to add three um, little markers to the research areas so that I can get more technologies. The, this means that I will produce three goods because I've got three crates there. This minus symbol is what I'm going to do to uh, lower my price that I'm offering my phones for. And every, one, every minus symbol that you see will do that. And then every plus symbol that you see will, of course, increase that. So you see here, if that were showing, you would increase your prices by one. So if I had something like this, well, they would cancel each other out and I would stay at five. So let's leave it like this. The blue is for logistics. So that's how many of those logistic markers you're going to be able to have available to put out along the, the networks across the world. If you leave this open, that means you're going to be able to improve your production during that step. What that looks like is you can pick one of these improvements over here. So let's just say I take this one. And then whenever it comes time to do your um, planning, you can take this little improvement and change what's available on the pad. So if I don't want this, but I want more research and I want to increase my price more, I can cover that up. The only restriction for these is that you can't go off the edge like that. They must cover an entire part of the pad. Knowing all that, I want to go back to the uh, research area down here just to show you how that works. Again, whenever you get, whenever you do the research for however many research squares you have showing, um, you will get those little stair step markers. And you can kind of like whenever you're putting out the markers for your logistics phase, you will put them down here to uh, research. And you see the number up here in the corner of these squares, that's how many you have to put there at least for the first person to be able to research that technology. So let's say I wanted to uh, research battery power, battery life. I need to put four down there. So yay, I've got four. I now can take one of my little buildings and put it here to show that I've researched that technology. I'll remove these and the first person gets to take the patent. That's gonna give you points at the end of the game. In this case, eight points. And now whoever comes and does this, it's only three to research. The technology that you get is one of these rectangles. So for each one, it's different, some kind of special ability. And these are also double-sided, so whenever you play at the beginning of the game, whenever you set up, you can flip them over for a different game each time. After all your researching, your production, your logistics, your selling, your pricing, all that kind of stuff, if you do that, you'll move on to the next round. Boom, 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 until there are five rounds. At the end of the fifth round, whoever has the most points, whoever sold the most phones, made the most money, will win the game. All right, let's talk about Smartphone Inc. So first of all, the game is excellent, excellent quality. You know, I love, first of all, the thing that stood out to me was the, the player or the, the board, the two layer board that's got the inset uh, places for the cubes and for the markers and, and all that kind of stuff so that things don't sling off the board. Uh, that's fantastic and I really give them props for that. Then you have the individual organizers for each player to keep the pieces um, in, in the right places so you don't get mixed up and you know exactly where to put everything. That's super helpful too. Now I wonder, you know, the, the aesthetic of the game has this kind of, this minimalist, uh, clean feeling. So I wonder if they were going for like this Apple feel um, that, you know, Apple's known for this minimalist kind of thing. And, and I just wonder if that was inspired by, or maybe they're kind of homaging to that. I don't know, just something to think about. Overall, I consider the gameplay to be very smooth. It's easy to follow. You know, you're going from one step to another, to another, to another. And it just, it flows fantastically if that's a word, 
and um, you always know what's coming up next because of what's on the top of the board. It always shows what's coming up next, and that's super helpful. Now, each of those steps that you do along the course of the game is, is satisfying. Um, it's just from setting your boards all the way up to the selling of your goods, um, you feel like you accomplish something in each one of those steps. And speaking of setting those boards, that's it's a very clever, unique action programming system. I've never seen it before and I don't think anybody else has and I think that that was a brilliant idea. I like it personally. Um, I think that it gives the game something new, a new, a nice puzzle to think about, how you're gonna position those and then which improvements to get and how to set those. Um, there's a lot to think about just with setting those those tablets. I didn't show the player screens, but you know you set those out so that whenever you do um, set up your boards, you're hiding them so your players don't, the other players don't see what you're doing. So those are helpful. And then on the inside, it has some little math equations to help you total up your points or show that if you know if you do this and you multiply it by this, here's what you're gonna put on the scoreboard. So that's helpful too. Now along with setting those those tablets, those pads at the beginning of each round, um, part of that is setting the prices for your goods. And, and that's a difficult thing to think about too. Um, at first, it's very restrictive. You can't really manipulate the price that much. You may be able to get it down by $1 or get it up by one or two. Um, so you really have to, if, if you wanna manipulate your prices um, with have more control over those, you're gonna have to go after those improvements to let you do that. And so that's one of the most difficult challenges that I find is because especially since the one, the player that has the, the lowest price gets to kind of pave the way in each step of the round, um, that's super important. But then again, you're not gonna get as much for the goods that you sell. But then again, you're, if you're lower, you're not as restrictive as who you can sell to. Um, but if you sell higher, you're more restricted, but you get more money. So setting those prices, again, is a nice little puzzle too. That just goes to show all the strategies you have to explore. The prices, you know, how much, how much logistics do I need to, to go around the board? You know, which, which of these different countries do I want to um, go after, to put an office building in? Because, you know, whenever you put a, a building down, another person can come around on that country, but they get fewer points. So you wanna be first to certain countries. And how many countries do you wanna to go to? Each one opens up opportunities for you to sell but do you really want to focus on a couple? Um, it, it's kind of up to you and again, something else to explore. How much research should you do? Those technologies can be super, super helpful and can really get you ahead in the game. But which ones do you go after? Do you go after the lower ones first and get several of those before you go for a higher ones or you go straight for the higher point ones that have a super powerful well, power? Um, which direction do you go? That's another thing to think about. Goods, how many goods do you want to produce? How many goods can you produce to sell? Of course, the more goods you sell, the more points you get, but if they're not the right, if you don't have the right requirements, you're not gonna sell very many, just a lot to think about. When I played two player, I did have this instance of kind of a runaway leader type thing. Um, I was able to throw down my goods um, around the board and sell them because I was able to meet the requirements of these, um, what the buyers wanted. So I was able to lay down so many, and then my wife who I was playing with um, just for reasons sometimes beyond her control, she didn't have as many goods and she couldn't match the restrictions that these cities had. And so I just kept racking up points and points and points and she was left behind. So there's not really, as far as I can see, some kind of catch up mechanic. You just, I guess from the outset, you have to be really good at balancing what you do. Now I showed you at the beginning of the overview, those retailer uh, tiles that you put down dependent on how many players are playing. I don't like those. Um, I don't like the blocked cities. Um, I understand why they're there, but it's restrictive to where you can go sell stuff. Um, and the way that the, the retailers work, you can still put a building down, but you only get a one-time benefit instead of being able to sell every round. Again, I understand why they're there. I just don't like that restriction. I don't like feeling that. Now going on to the solo mode uh, with Steve, um, it's it's fun. I enjoy doing it. It's a great way to learn the game, but it's very, very difficult. I find that I couldn't beat it once. So if you want to challenge a solo challenge, well, this is a good option for you. I think it's super thematic. Um, everything that you do makes sense. It feels like you're a um, running a cell phone company and being in the early stages of that era of being developed these new technologies that are new and that things that people want. 
Um, setting the prices, um, it feels super thematic, everything that you do. Now again, you can play one, two, three, four, five players, and there are some drawbacks to each, mainly um, the restrictions that I talked to you about, about those uh, retailers. The time to play, I don't think, is going to uh, differ that much by the players, number of players that are there, because you're doing a lot of things at the same time. So you might add a little bit per player, but overall, I don't think it's going to affect the, the overall time to play. So on my first play, I was just kind of meh about the game. It was just not really something that, that really caught my attention. And then on further plays, going back to all those strategies that I mentioned, those started coming up and I liked exploring those. Now I will say, I don't like economic style games. Um, and to be honest with this one, it's, it's not something that's changed my mind necessarily, but I did like exploring all those different strategies. If you're a fan of economic games, I would definitely recommend this. Where I go as far as saying this is essential, with it being in the Dice Tower Essential line, it's hard for me to say since it's not really my style of game. Because of the positives I mentioned above, I'm gonna go ahead and say that for an easy to learn, hard to master addition to a game collection, I can't say it's essential, mainly because I don't think the audience for economic games is one as big as other style of games. But it is a solid, well-designed game that I think fans of economic games will thoroughly enjoy. If you're curious about what I think of the status update 1.1 expansion, I put a link to my review of it in the description of this video. Now thank you so much for watching. Oh, sorry, let me get this. Hey Tom. No, sorry, I didn't quite think it's essential. No, you're not essential. If you found this review to be helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the Lighten Up Initiative, where you'll find other reviews, comedy sketches, tutorials, reviews with my adorable daughters, and playthroughs with my insanely intelligent and gorgeous wife. Until next time, don't take the board game hobby too seriously. Let loose, laugh at yourself and all the ridiculous things we do, and most importantly, lighten up.